One of NATO's main goals is to keep people safe, and that includes keeping them safe from disasters, natural and man-made. It is vital that we do all we can to prepare for when disasters happen, so we can act quickly and efficiently to save lives. That is why, 20 years ago, NATO established the Euro-Atlantic Disaster Response Coordination Center. I think the EADRC would not exist today if, in 1953, Allies would not have developed a policy for disaster assistance in peace. Time. And the fact is, that of course, it was designed as a center for natural disasters, but one of the first big operations had nothing to do with a natural disaster. We worked from March until August, almost 24 hours a day, seven days a week, thanks to great support of many, many, many nations and also divisions in our own house. After this major operation, it became time to start thinking about exercises. And the first major exercise we did was in Ukraine. By the way, I met my wife there. The EADRCC organizes exercises to train rescuers from different nations in different types of scenarios to enhance their ability to work together and to promote the use of new technologies. The most memorable experience uh, was in September 2005 when the United States requested international assistance in the aftermath of Hurricane Katrina. Very quickly, the Allies decided at the time to launch uh, a NATO humanitarian relief operation using military assets to transport relief goods uh, from Europe to the United States. And the ADRCC was right in the middle of this operation. I think there's not a single country in this world who would not encounter one or the other difficulty, especially in receiving international assistance. This has become a major objective in the ADRCC field exercises ever since, how to receive international assistance. Every year, nations come together from across the lines and from around the world, not to learn how to fight, but to learn how to work together in the face of catastrophe, to put theory into praxis, and to save people's lives. When we started the exercise, we said that you can fail in three ways. First, have injuries. Second, have teams that are not challenged enough. And third, teams not working together. Our mantra for the exercise was to have all back home safe, tired and happy. And we succeeded. As EADRCC steps into its third decade, innovations become more central to what we do in the center. The EDRCC exercises are a great platform to test new technologies. For example, virtual reality is already expanding 
the way we exercise. We also have remote participants using telemedicine, so you no longer need to be there in a the field exercise in order to participate and to provide support. And we also look at artificial intelligence. I want to first and foremost celebrate, in fact, the people who have been involved in the EADRCC for over so many years. I'm so happy to see many familiar faces, and I uh, see that we have uh, had such good colleagues working with us, and uh, also there they've been carrying on the flag uh, after they left the EADRCC. Well, over the last 20 years, the center's mandate was adapted, both in terms of types of emergencies and the geographical area it covers. While remaining NATO's main civil response mechanism, the center will continue to adapt to the security environment. It will become more focused on enhancing resilience and will continue to enhance efficiency through innovation.